Hi everyone, I'm Science Cisnelli. And I'm Dylan. And he's Dylan. And we're here today for a Find Your Einstein video. Dylan, what are you doing? I'm drinking this because uh, I'm going to go to the gym. need the uh, electrolytes. And what's an electrolyte? Oh, that's easy. Um, an electrolyte is a thing that you need to exercise. And why do you need it? That is a great question. Uh, do you think we could do some science to find out? Of course we can. Sounds like it's time to find, find your Einstein. Einstein. Let's start with a basic definition. An electrolyte is a kind of substance that conducts electricity when dissolved in water. Pure, distilled water is not a very good conductor of electricity. That means that electricity does not move through water easily. So, water requires the presence of dissolved electrolytes to conduct electrical currents. Sea water is a very good conductor of electricity. The salt it contains is a strong electrolyte. Because of this, electrolytes are extremely important to our health. Many of the body systems, like the nervous system or the cardiovascular system, just to name two, require electrolytes in order to function. For example, one of the fastest ways that our body sends messages from one part of itself to another is by sending small electrical impulses along nerves and muscle fibers. It does that by using electrolytes. Without electrolytes, our body would not be able to organize itself to do things it has to do in order to stay healthy and well. So they're pretty important. When we drink water, our body gets the fluids it needs to stay hydrated. Now, staying hydrated is especially important if you want to play sports or engage in any kind of strenuous physical activity. When we exercise a lot, our bodies heat up. And in order to cool down, our body uses electrolytes to draw water out through our sweat glands and onto our skin, where it evaporates. Now, when sweat evaporates, it takes a little bit of heat away with it. And so sweating continuously helps to keep our body cool. But sweat has electrolytes in it. That's why sweat tastes salty. And when the water in your sweat evaporates, those electrolytes stay behind on your skin, where they can't can't get back into your body. So after working out a lot or being in the sun all day, it's really important not just to drink plenty of water, but also to replenish the store of electrolytes in your body. Here's a question for you. What has more electrolytes in it? A sports drink or something more natural like orange juice? Which is better for you to drink after you exercise? Well, as we know, when we have a question, the best way to answer it is with an experiment. In today's experiment, we'll be using electricity to measure which drink has the most electrolytes. Because we know that electrolytes conduct electricity, then we know that the more electrolytes there are in a fluid, the better that fluid will conduct electricity. So, we're going to determine the amount of electrolytes in a number of different fluids by measuring those fluids' conductivity, that is, their ability to conduct electricity. To measure electricity, we're going to be using a multimeter. A multimeter is an electronic device that can measure several different aspects of electricity, including voltage and resistance. Today, we'll be using our multimeter to measure current. Whoa, 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 hold on one second, okay? Before we go any further, it's very important to remember that electricity is extremely dangerous. If you're not very careful, you can hurt yourself with it. That means getting burned or worse. So before you go any further, make sure that your adult is with you and that they do the dangerous stuff. Okay, cool? Cool. Okay, back to Nalitza. Before we get started, we need to gather our materials and make sure we have everything we need for our experiment. Today, we'll be using a kit from Science Buddies. And that kit will include one digital multimeter, two multimeter leads, one red and one black, three alligator clip leads, one and a half meters of bare 24 gauge copper wire, one nine volt battery, and one nine volt battery clip. Additionally, you will also need a disposable plastic straw, a pair of scissors, 
some test input lids, we'll be using tap water, distilled water, a sports drink, and some orange juice. Eight small bowls. It's important that the bowls are not made of metal. Masking tape for making labels, a pen or a marker, a ruler, some paper towels, and a lab notebook to record your findings. Once you have all your materials together, we can get started. So the multimeter and the battery are very exciting, but we're going to put those aside for a moment because first, we need to make a conductance sensor. Our multimeter is very useful, but it's not made to measure liquids the way we want to. So we're going to make a sensor that we can attach to the multimeter to give it the ability to measure fluids. And the good news is it's super easy. All you need to make your sensor is a straw, some copper wire, and a pair of scissors. First, cut a two inch piece from the drinking straw. Here it is. Next, cut two pieces of copper wire, each about five inches long. Now, wrap each of the wires around your bit of straw, leaving about two inches of wire at the top. You want your wires to fit snug on the straw so they don't slip or slide around. Also, make sure the wires don't touch each other. This could cause a short circuit and it might break your multimeter. Next, we need to prepare our test solution in our rinsing station. First, you want to label each bowl. You can rip off a piece of the masking tape for each and then label them as follows. For your test solutions, you can label distilled water, tap water, sports drink, and orange juice. For your rinsing station, you will label a tap water rinse, distilled rinse one, distilled rinse two, and distilled rinse three. The rinsing station is important because you don't want leftover drops from one test solution to mix with another test solution since that would contaminate your experimental results. Arrange the four bowls in a line, then place a piece of paper towel in front of each bowl. In between testing each solution, you're going to rinse your sensor by dipping it first in the tap water, then into each of the distilled water rinses. Make sure you give your sensor a small tap between each rinse on the paper towels to get any little drops out, like so. Now, our last task to prepare for our experiment is to assemble a conductance measuring circuit. In the field of electronics and electrical engineering, a circuit is a closed loop that's made to transmit electricity. All active circuits possess the same components, a power source that introduces electricity into the circuit and a path for the electricity to follow. Our power source will be this nine volts battery and we will build our path using the leads from the multimeter and our alligator clips. First, make sure your multimeter is turned off. Next, take your black lead and plug it into the port that's labeled COM. Then take your red lead and plug it into the port labeled V, upside down horseshoe, and A, which stands for volt resistance milliamps. Now have the adult with you attach the battery connector to your 9 volt battery. It should just, just snap right on there. Attach your black alligator clip to your black sleeve. Then attach one end of your red alligator clip to the red lead and attach the other end of the red alligator clip to the red wire from the battery pack. You want to make sure that the wire touches the metal. Finally, attach one end of your green alligator clip to the black wire from the battery pack. There, 
your circuit is basically complete. When we test our solutions, we will connect the black and green alligator clips to our conductance sensor. But when we're not testing the solutions, then it's best to leave the circuit incomplete. That will help keep us safe from any accidental shocks. And with that, we're all set up. To begin, fill your bowls with tested fluids and prepare your rinse and station. It only needs to be enough to submerge your conductance sensor. Next, we're going to turn on our multimeter to the 200 microamps setting, which looks like this. This is a very sensitive setting and we're going to use it to test our distilled water. Grab the bowl labeled distilled water and bring it over to your testing circuit. Attach the black alligator clip to your sensor and then the green alligator clip to the other part of the sensor. Now submerge your sensor and let it rest at the bottom of the bowl. Record the reading on your multimeter in your lab notebook. Once you turn off your multimeter, detach your sensor from the alligator clips. Dry it by tapping it on your paper towel. Since the first test liquid was distilled water, we don't really need to rinse it just yet. Next, we're going to test the tap water. For this reading and for the rest of our readings, we're going to turn our multimeter onto the 200 milliamps setting. Attach your clips to your sensor. Remember, always do the black one first and then green. And you submerge your sensor to the bottom of your bowl and record your findings just like the first one. Turn off your multimeter and remove your sensor. Rinse the sensor at your rinse station. Dip your sensor in the tap water rinse bowl, then tap it on the paper towel to remove any drops. Dip your sensor in the first distilled water rinse bowl, tap dry, and repeat in each of the two remaining distilled water rinse bowls. Next, grab your sports drink bowl, turn on your multimeter to the 200 milliamp setting, and repeat the steps again. Now let's rinse it on our rinse station. Finally, grab your orange juice bowl, turn your multimeter to 200 milliamps, attach your clips, Black first and then green. Submerge, record, turn off your multimeter, and do the rinse station. All right, conclusions. So if you've been getting the same results that we did, the fluid with the highest conductivity was orange juice by a long shot. The reason orange juice has a higher degree of conductivity is because it has more electrolytes in it. So to answer the question, what has more electrolytes? Sports drink or orange juice? Seems like it's orange juice. Next time you're exercising or out in the hot sun all day, maybe reach for that OJ. Sorry brand name sports drink. This has been Find Your Einstein. Stay curious.